few people joining in. Um, hoping that the sound and everything is going to behave in terms of the technology. Thank you for joining us today in terms of our webinar. I can see I've got a number of people who've joined already and some who are still coming in um, through there. So I think uh, if Caitlin, you on the waiting room for me, uh, that would be great. They're just coming into the meeting. So just kicking off in terms of this, um, this particular webinar is something we have run as a topic before. Um, it's all about, well, as we're in lockdown two, it seemed entirely appropriate to revisit the concept of how can we enable a virtual high performance culture? Um, what drives high performance and what do we need to do? And what's changed, I suppose, in terms of the way we are operating at the moment? So I know a number of people, I can see some familiar names on here. So a number of you I recognize and have joined before. So thank you for joining this webinar. Um, I will introduce myself for those of you who haven't met me before. And if you wouldn't mind redoing the favor um, in terms of introducing yourselves in the chat. So those people who've been on a webinar with me before will know that I do try to make it as interactive as possible. I anticipate that this will take about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, but what would be great is if you could just let me know in the chat where you're from because actually part of the benefit of these is that we have sub chats going on between participants. We've even had um, a group of people um, decide to work together on a particular topic because they shared a challenge. So use the chat, um, introduce yourself, let us know where in the organisation, where in the country you're from today and or world actually. I know we ha I often have overseas participants. Um, let us know what your role is um, because this particular topic is appropriate for HR or managers. So let us know what your role is so we can have an idea of, of what you're looking for. Um, and actually, if you can do us a favor, if on your, um, you may not realize with Zoom, you're actually able to edit your name. So if you've come in as an XYZ or a, a, a strange number, if you don't mind up updating your name, it will make it much easier for me to be able to respond to you. Hi, Clementine, really nice to have you on board. I think I recognize um, your name again. So great to have you. So everyone follow Clementine's lead and uh, do let us know what your role is, where you come from. Um, and I'll just briefly introduce myself. So I've spent too many years in corporate learning and development roles. Fun fact, I started out in Pfizer and I wish I'd kept my shares seeing as they launched the viral drug yesterday, um, they launched the uh, uh, new vaccine of they appear to have made it at first first to the post with the vaccine. Um, I'm a psychologist and I'm also founder of Actus Software, which is where I spend a lot of my time and I gather a lot of um, experience here and it's great to see some of our clients on here and let us know if you're a client um, of Actus. Um, what we really want to do is help build a better workplace for people and the webinars and the HR Uprising podcast that I host are all part of our value added services. If you're interested in change, I wrote a book called How to Be a Change Superhero and actually that, to, I've done a few webinars on that, um, which is something that you can also access. It's available on Amazon. And I'm a keen but average netball player. We managed to get back for a whole couple of weeks with netball this season and obviously we're all back into lockdown. So yes, I've got V2006 coming in on the waiting room. We wonder who that person's name is when they join. So keeping moving, um, the learning points here. So um, what we want to cover is we're going to look about the challenges of performance and working virtually. Um, they've been talking about lots of things on this, but actually how can we, how is this evolving, I think, as we are moving to lockdown two and we may be in a hybrid workplace. And looking also at how do we marry this up with what works overall with performance management, because it's not an entirely new situation. A lot of the best practice principles about what works with performance management also work with virtual people management. The challenge is that we perhaps weren't doing it in the real world um, or we need to adjust those skills to a virtual setting. As ever, I'm going to try and make it as interactive and as, um, I guess, involving and practical as possible. So thank you everybody for saying hello and, and introducing yourselves and a few last people are still coming in, still people in the, you got to keep an eye on that waiting room, it's a, a couple more people joining us. Um, so really great to see and I can see I've got lots of, let's have a quick look. Um, hi Elise, welcome. Um, I've got, uh, so someone who's got, I may not have heard your Isle of Man, um, ML3, be great to know what your actual name is, ML3 from Maitland Isle of Man. Uh, you're very welcome, just nice to call you something other than a number. Um, I feel like it's in James Bond movie here. Uh, so we've got people 
all over the UK I'm seeing so far. Um, so Ch Chesterfield, uh, Chesterton House Financial Planning, Julie, welcome. Um, so some familiar names here. So mainly I'm seeing an HR and L&D, but we've also got some um, people management roles as well. So that's absolutely fine. And a software engineer, Duncan. Wow, good for you getting on and um, en enhancing your knowledge here. So you're very welcome. Okay, so also now we've all found the chat, I'm interested is what are you finding in terms of virtual people and performance management challenges that are emerging for you in this current climate? So what do you see that's coming through? Hi, Emily. I think we've got another someone I know there. Great stuff. So um, what are you seeing as those challenges that are really coming through? And I can see there's some people here who are also looking for roles or between roles. So it's really useful to keep your finger on the pulse about what's going on within organisations. So Kate says presenteeism. So you're seeing, I'm, I'm reading from that, that people feel like they've got to always be there um, in terms of that and they're always on, but maybe they're not as effective as we want. What other challenges have people got? <clears throat> trying to remain connected. So is that with your team or with your colleagues? Fatigue, I mean, I think fatigue is a big one, isn't it? As we go into winter, general motivation, well-being, because this is a bit tricky in terms of um, the novelty of lockdown has definitely worn off, hasn't it? Um, in terms of those. So we're seeing lots of well-being pieces, people are disengaged, losing motivation, presenteeism, and well-being, people feeling flat. We've got winter coming up 100%. Um, how do we manage it in an agile and uncertain world? So agile performance management is what we need to be able to do. Clementine's an interesting one here is all of those problems, a lot of this is going to go down to how we manage people. And so she's saying that actually, um, managers don't see the value in management. And actually, you put your finger, you are absolutely spot on it, because what we need to do as virtual people managers, we need to be more effective than and almost work harder than we did in a, an actual face to face working environment. It's actually harder. You've got to work harder to connect with people, to build trust, um, to maintain it. The easy thing to do is just to detach. And if we didn't buy into that in the first place, then um, if you're someone who's trying to get your managers to manage well, that's a, an uphill battle, isn't it? Because they don't see the value. Consistency is a challenge in terms of these things and okay, consistency coming through and keeping things fresh as Paula, um, moving things online. Yes, there's a sudden swerve, isn't there? Everything suddenly got to go online. Absolutely. Okay, so how do we do this? And also keeping energy fine high when you might not feel it. So if you're a line manager or an HR or an L&D professional, we're all tired too, aren't we? We've been going through this for a long time. So how do we manage this? Real practical one here from Gordon saying, how do, you how do we manage body language? How do we look at that? Um, and those sort of things that we understood how people were doing more intuitively, more unconsciously, didn't we previously? So I totally agree with the um, challenges you've got here. I think those pieces are also you see is there's less information sharing. So you're not able to collaborate. Are there bigger risks there where we're not going to be as creative? We're not seeing the inputs, but I mean, that's maybe where we're getting this problem with that. If we're only measuring inputs, we're getting this sense of presenteeism from people, aren't we? Which that can um, mean that people are not actually delivering anything, um, but we can't actually see what they're doing either. So you have this sort of lack of awareness as to whether people are doing what they need to do potentially, and they may also feel the same way. It's easy for us to feel isolated, particularly if we don't live with other people or we're in maybe a, a team of one. So you've not got those sort of virtual teams where you're having to jump on things. The, the monotony, I think, the monotony, the dark nights, there's lots of things there where we start to get more energy drain. Um, seems like there's nothing so much now about physical setup. I think perhaps we've got the hang of that now, haven't we, getting the right environment. We've worked out how to physically work remotely. Um, but there's lots of other things here which actually have negative impact. We've not got the informal recognition, positive reinforcement of positivity. Um, and it takes more effort to communicate effectively in this. And if we are always on, we're not recharging. It is bizarre, really, isn't it? How in theory, we've got more time in the day because we're not commuting to work, all those sort of things. Yet, actually, we may feel like we've got less time for ourselves unless we're very disciplined about getting out and having a structure around our day to, to do that. So let's have a think about this. So with all those in mind, all those challenges are in place for you and they are in place for the people that you work with. What do you say in terms of your 
performance right now, if I was to put my poll up, um, how would you gauge your own performance though in this climate, in the virtual climate? Do you think you're actually, even with all of those things, you're actually more productive? Would you say you're probably with give and take about the same? Or do you think actually working remotely is making you less productive? Okay, great stuff. Up 70% of votes you're on it here, brilliant. I'll give you five more seconds and I'll launch polling. I've got to say it's absolutely neck and neck which is interesting because when I think we launched this in the first lockdown, this question, people felt they were more productive than they were when we had a work environment. Although I suppose those people, those people who've put my productivity is about the same. I'm just going to clarify the question. Um, are you saying about the same as you were pre-COVID, as in pre-lockdown one? Or are you saying it's about the same as, so assume that's the question. So is your productivity ab um, about the same as it was when you were in the workplace originally um, before we all had to work remotely or many of us did? Okay, so you've got the chance to change if you wanted to, but it looks like people are happy with their, their decision. So I'll end and share the poll. <clears throat> so what's interesting is this has definitely changed from when i ran this in the first lockdown so about 30 percent 34 percent feel more productive so they're able to get more done um 30 percent say it's say they are about the same as pre lockdown, and 30 percent are less productive so guys if you feel you are more productive or less productive just put in the chat if you said less and say why and put more and say why tell us what it is that's making the difference with this setup as to why you feel your productivity has either increased or decreased It'd be really interesting to know that because we might be able to come up with some ideas to to help that or share ideas yeah, Emily's. I feel I know what you mean, though. Emily says, I feel like I've moved from more productive back to normal. But isn't that maybe because we've had new higher expectations? And is that part of the risk then that we now have got used to working longer hours again? I don't know. It's interesting. More productive, less interruptions, less you've got too many distractions, said Samantha. Um, and she's energized by people. So find it hard to motivate yourself at home. So too many distractions. Can you turn the distractions off? Um, but if you're feeling you've not got that energy boost of being with others. Okay, I'll keep an eye on that, but I'll keep going in terms of the interest of time. It's very interesting. So building on that, because you are saying, in fact, in many ways, what you're putting here are some of the answers to this question. When you think about what helps you to perform at your best in a virtual environment. So we had, now we've taken out things like homeschool and that makes a big difference about lockdown too, doesn't it? But um, so people are more productive, they feel they can manage their time better. Joe's saying she can start earlier in the day, can manage her day more effectively. Um, Duncan's saying less. I wonder whether this is a symptom of what's happened less because also communication over chat platforms less efficient than face-to-face. -face. I also think the communication over chat has ramped up, hasn't it? It's almost now everyone's got their heads around the technology. You can be interrupted all the time. Now, I mean, this is an interesting thing then. So what ideas have you got that can help manage these? So some people it's working better for them, some people it's working less well. What are the, the things that you found work well in terms of performance and productivity in this virtual environment? And while you put your ideas in the chat, I'll share some with you. So I facilitated a session for a housing association last week and we did a half day session, which I have to say I would have not thought was possible pre this which actually was fine um, really interactive use breakouts and things um, and basically what Clemens is doing is actually they were saying that they have Microsoft Teams and people were just phoning straight through without even checking status so we talked about things like why we should maybe put in place almost rules of engagement or management charters that are the rules that you wouldn't just you wouldn't just walk in if someone's in a meeting with someone you wouldn't just barge in unless it was an emergency in which case you'd apologize whereas actually they were in the habit of jumping on a call and interrupting people and even if you wind back to your very first original perform um productivity or time management training program that we've probably all been on one of the main things they say is it's about controlling our environment and in this virtual world stretch technological world we have so many more things that can come in and disturb us so exactly as Emily's saying so put status on do not disturb control your environment tell people that you need to focus on things 
make sure that you structure your day so that you have got a well structured diary management you know what you're working on when schedule in working on those big projects let's say when you're at your best so if you're at your best first thing in the day plan to spend two hours on those first thing in the day and put your equivalent your virtual equivalent of out of office on right and and don't let people interrupt you take away those distractions in terms of your phone and um, social media we all know it's very easy if you've got your phone by you in fact there was a study that showed that people who just had their phone in their peripheral vision as I've got mine now you're more likely just to stop and block and pick it up whereas if you just put it out of sight if I put it under a book then you're less likely to have that subconscious interruption so uh, yeah schedule email times eat away from my screen so take a break make sure I'm getting fresh air and exercise, get my brain going in the morning, otherwise you stay in a slump all day. So you've got to, now you've not got that commute, that forced, um, that forced movement, we have to build that in. And if we build it in in a positive way, it could be a massive opportunity to get fit or do something that you wouldn't have to do when, rather than sit on a train. Um, but the flip side of it is it's so easy. I nearly did that this morning myself. I sat at my desk at half past 6 a.m. and I'd intended to go and take the dogs for a walk. I dragged myself out at nine o'clock because I'd ended up getting straight into things. So you've got to make sure that we do that. Now, of course, I've just said that I took my dog out for a walk at nine o'clock a.m. and I'm in an environment and a culture where that is perfectly acceptable. So perhaps this also feeds into this piece about presenteeism. What do we need to do to um, and create a culture where, particularly when the days are short, that people feel able to get out and get fresh air and recharge during the working day rather than sit at their desks and be less productive? Wouldn't we all rather be really, really productive for six or seven hours a day and have those extra hours back rather than sit at our desk for 10 hours a day and be less productive? So I'm just looking at other things. Um, so feedback, Jordan, you're saying 360 feedback, hard to see your impact when you can't have conversations, meetings face to face. Are you saying that people should do 360 feedback to get to know each other better? Is that what you're saying? It's something to, to raise awareness of people. Um, so you have more awareness, get feedback from people, yoga break in the morning and afternoon, eat healthily, don't feel, again, this is what we did before, Rachel Barker saying, don't fill the time up with more meetings just because it feels like more time, still question what do we need the meetings for and can we achieve it in a different way, it's, meetings still expand, don't they, to take the time that we give them and they can still be a massive drain. Uh, okay, Emily's given some top tips for anyone who's on Android. I'll let you read that. Julie says, write a must do eight list each day with three things on it. Tick off those things and make you feel you've achieved it. Um, move more on when on calls, if not on video. To that point, Julie, which is a nice one as well, it's um, someone talked about a, a to do and a to da list. So if you can have it on a post it, you can put your post its. I think this is from the um, Swiggly Careers podcast. Uh, if you have a post it on the wall uh, with your to do list, the three of them, and then you move them over to done, to da, you've done them. So if that's the sort of thing you like to do, then that's uh, an option. Take time for chats with colleagues, not just work calls. Absolutely. Um, what I've started doing, I hope my team don't mind too much, um, but I have also started. Um, trying to plan time to catch up with people when I'm out walking the dog um, so I get to go out but I can also chat and I'm not in a rush to go on to the next thing because I'm out doing that appreciate they have to deal with me heavy breathing so um, it may not all be positive and some things you need to have a screen but it gives you the opportunity to have that bit more relaxed time so maybe you can plan with colleagues to both be out or physically doing something rather than having that at your desk great so thank you for sharing those so those are all practical, real things to deal with the circumstances we're in. It's about us taking control of them. It's about sharing those ideas. And it's about us using the stuff that we already know. You know, you've got a top tips episode in that chat there. And the question is, what do we need to do to make ourselves do it? Rather than it's about waking up and being conscious about what we want to do, rather than sort of being on autopilot. And it is more challenging because of the time of year and the light and things. So we really have to almost work hard to make sure that we are on it and reward ourselves with a break um, or doing something other than work because that is the benefit of being remote in theory we can fit in more of the stuff that we want to do or we can work slightly different hours to get things done that we really want to do so then let's link back to um, the evidence around what really drives performance. Let's see whether these are still applicable in a virtual world. So we carried out a research review a couple of years ago now um, by Dr. Du Nuno de Camara. Um, and if you want to download the full research review, it's available on the website or we'll put the links in the follow-up email that we send out to you. 
um, and he sifted through I think 200 odd pieces of performance literature over the last 20 odd years, probably 20 to 30 years, um, as to what really correlates with performance in terms of management. And these were the themes that came through. And isn't it interesting? Any moments of rocket science here? Because <laughs> I'm thinking probably not. So what they say generates high performance is clear goals. In fact, the most evidence of anything is um, in terms of correlating with performance is the impact of having a clear goal and um, gaining feedback and recognition of your performance against it. So, of course, what we need to think in this, in this virtual environment, we need to do more of that. Now, in fairness, you know, the HR profession and have been saying that for a long time, we should have clear short term goals and give people recognition and feedback against them. Now, if that's an annual process, it's too, too long. So they should be more frequent check ins. But actually, if you think about so and so it should be agile, I think was it Emily who said earlier, use your agile, it should be an agile process. The thing that I think has probably changed the most, however, with a, a virtual environment is that the, t the time frame has concertinaed. So we can't even go away with quarterly or maybe even monthly goals. We might have monthly goals, but we still need to check in probably weekly with people to agree on milestones because somehow that sense of focus feels like it's um, reduced when people are remote. I don't know if that's true or not or whether or not that is just the fact that people aren't seeing people are in the office um, and assuming that's the case. But certainly it feels that short term goals, but more frequent feedback and recognition um, is particularly important in the virtual environment. Transparent communication. Now, that is an interesting one because this is talking about being open and honest, sharing information. Um, uh, you know, from the organisation point of view, uh, making sure that both parties know what's expected of them. And I think in a virtual environment, it can be easy for things to happen in pockets without us being aware of it, whereas you might have seen a meeting going on in the in the office or seen people talking to each other. It's easy virtually for us not to know what's going on. And I think that's something which, as a, if you're a line manager um, or senior in an organisation, we have to think harder and almost communicate more uh, more frequently and more clearly to ensure that people are getting that sense that they're being communicated with. Coaching and development. So as opposed to telling people how to do it, that dictatorial um, directive style, coaching people. Now that does take time. And, and the point earlier about the lady who is saying that if managers don't really think the, see the value in it, they won't necessarily be great at coaching, but supporting people to form, helping them see how um, what they're doing right and what they can do better Coaching is a key skill for empowerment. And actually that is vital um, in the virtual work environment because if people are having to work on their own, we need to empower them to be autonomous and productive um, and without our sort of direction. So those coaching skills are really more important if we're a virtual manager. Strategic alignment, I think that's about us understanding where the goals of the, um, the organization are and in this environment. So has, has your business direction changed? Um, has, it, has it had to adapt in order to survive in the climate? Um, do we understand how our role fits into where the business is going? Because that's both motivational, but also it's about our productivity because we could be working incredibly hard, but not necessarily in a strategically aligned way. So it's about making sure that we've, we've got that strategic alignment. There is evidence that people um, want to feel rewarded. So if they feel that they're high performers, that there should be some level of reward, whether it's financial or whether it's development. That for me, I've got a number of people who are L&D people on here. I think that's an interesting one to think about, isn't it, in this climate? Because how do we have the visibility? How do we make sure that people have the same opportunities in terms of career development um, and we're able to help them progress? So those are interesting challenges that we have here. High performance trained managers, that is a major, that makes a major difference in terms of that, the skills there, in terms of making sure that people um, have the right skills and managers have the right skills and motivation to do a good job. Uh, as, a, as a country in the UK, we were pretty poor at this prior to um, lockdown. So there's no way we've gonna suddenly improve, I don't think, um, since then. So this is something that we've got um, less uh, that, that so we've still got a gap in as an as an organization as a country and then climate to trust that is something that makes a massive difference people will um, do their best if they feel trusted and they feel that they're in an environment um, that, that that they trust others so you've got an overall climate of trust and that is 
really massively important um, in this particular setup that we've got at the moment in terms of the um, the environment where we're working remotely. You have to be presenteeism doesn't demonstrate trust, does it? It's not about that. It's very much about um, making sure that people feel they want to work and they feel trusted to work. And if they're feeling they've got to check in or um, there's this sense of presenteeism where they've got to be seen to be at their desk, that's not necessarily going to lead to empowerment. So all of those are things that have always driven performance. Do any of you, do you see that any of these um, are more or less relevant now? So this is what, you know, you know ten, a year ago, I'd have been saying we need to be doing more of this in our organisations. And it's just in many ways that we need to do the same things, but maybe better, maybe um, adjust the style in which we're doing it a little bit. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, so Kate says communication is in, more important now. Just in the chat on those, if you guys in certain, yes, communicate strategy, so Tori, you're both on the same page, yeah, Kate and Tori. Um, so Tori's saying you need to communicate strategy more clearly. It has to be much more intentional and directive. So they say, this is where we're going. This is how your role fits into it. Um, training our managers to ensure they realise the role of communication. So one of the things about communication is that um, there's this term called deletion, which is when you know something really, really, really well, you forget that you ever learned it. So you can delete it. And what can happen is that pockets of information, um, which are very familiar to people in a certain areas of the organisation, don't necessarily get shared with others. So it's about making that conscious opportunity to share. Have any of you come up with new ways of communicating in your organisations that are doing better or training your managers in a better way? more management training, creative feedback and learning culture. Absolutely, we've had a massive, uh, we've developed a, a virtual people management, people performance management series of courses. And the demand has been huge for this because it feels that actually, A, people can learn virtually now, whereas they might have, they wouldn't have taken days out, but they can learn these sort of things, but they feel they need to. So managers and organizations are saying we need to invest in our managers to manage this new culture. So you've got, so you're doing all staff broadcasts. Emily's saying they've started doing all staff broadcasts on Zoom. They never used to do that, these sorts of things. Um, so I'll keep keeping an eye on what you're doing. Let's see some more great ideas that you're doing um, and as to how you are developing this, um, your skills in your organization. This one here is, I would like to join things up to help us think about this strategically. And I think if, you, if you're in a role where you are about building, let's say, an HR strategy or a learning and development strategy, how do we link this all together? Well, first of all, you start, it depends on where you start. If you start, you want a high performance culture, then the grounding of it coming back along here is about quality people management. So yes, looking at your people management skills, where do they need to raise them? And also looking at your culture. So do we have a culture of transparency and a culture of trust? So a number of you on that chat were saying earlier, we have this issue with presenteeism. Well, that is not a culture of trust. So how can we need to look at what's causing that presenteeism and what can we do to replace it with a culture of trust um, in this environment? And often it's underpinned by managers. So your line manager might be going, you know, Kate, you've been at your desk all day. I can see you've been all day. Have you been out for a walk? Have you done your yoga this morning? Um, it's about the managers expressing the fact that they trust their people to deliver that. Now, of course, we need people to perform. And if the managers are setting good quality objectives and coaching people to achieve those and they are short term objectives, then there should be no problem in encouraging people to leave their desk. So you can see how those fit together. And then these are almost the inputs that you can encourage. So you can give your managers training or make sure they attend training. There's plenty of stuff out there. We can make sure that we have, if we've got visibility of whether goals being set, our goals being set more frequently. So we could see whether people are setting um, goals or milestones more re regularly and getting that feedback and recognition. So all of these aspects here um, all drive through. And if we put these in place, they all fit in a virtual environment to drive high performance. I was just going to see if there's any other ideas. So coming to, so your trust, guys. So the trust thing I wanted to um, trust. So what we've got, make sure we don't micromanage. If anyone else has got any comments on how you are building trust or how um, trust is being broken in your organizations. So we've got creating climate of trust, 
make sure that people are talking socially and building relationships. So Joe, you say you're using Yammer, Yammer and Teams. Is it okay for people to turn off Yammer or Teams to be unavailable for reason? Is that socially acceptable? Because that would be an example of a culture of trust. Or do people say, oh, they're not online and assume they're not, not working? Um, Absolutely, says Samantha. If managers don't set clear goals, they cannot manage by results or outputs, and then trust is really difficult to achieve. Absolutely. Yes, so it is. If the, It's almost if the manager doesn't agree and give clarity about what's expected in the first place, the individual may end up not delivering through no fault of their own, although let's face as individuals, if we're not a manager, it's up to us to maybe ask what's expected and check that we're working on the right things as well. We can take responsibility. But, but um, how do we get people to break that cycle? How do we motivate them to the seemingly obvious solution? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, and how do we? It's about maybe holding a mirror up to them as to what makes them perform uh, in terms of these. The, there's nothing new in terms of the challenges that we've got in a virtual environment. What I think it's done is it has um, demonstrated quite how lacking in people management motivation and skills we do have as an endemic issue there um, and it's heightened it by a remote workplace because you can't just say oh that person showed up to work therefore they're doing a good job because um, you can't see what's going on and again so using systems to help with that is a really good idea okay so Kevin says we've got an example of lack of trust they have people in the team notifying um, people if they turn off 10 minutes early right and so it's feeling that they have to to do that and it's interesting though because we have someone in our team who goes to pick up um, their son and in the middle of the day and that's fine that's part of the culture and they just say I'm just popping out to pick up son I'll be back online later and actually there is something there which is that's absolutely fine because what they're doing is if something in there in a sales role if a lead comes in they're not going to be there and others pick up but it is interesting because initially it feels a bit weird because we're almost all uh, in a zone where we might feel like we've got to be presenteeism it does by um nature mean that we have to be more flexible for different styles for different people communicating expectations is absolutely key yeah emily's made an observation for you yeah great okay so just in terms of the um culture all i've done here is i've reshaped this so i looked at the evidence and i looked at what we picked up during lockdown one as to what the people management culture about virtual people management um, would be and if you've not downloaded it already we'll provide you with it actually we'll send it out as an attachment if you'd like it so we've done an ebook um, on this perform people management culture and it's just a simple mnemonic but and it's it's spelling it out and I think the order in which it comes is really important I believe the key in terms of performance management in a virtual world is about starting with people and we need to make sure that um, our team, we know our people as individuals, so that might be understanding their personality preferences, are they people who want to be spoken to daily or left on their own, but showing you understand their style and, and, and care, actually, how they're doing um, in there. And part of that, by having that personal approach, we need to build trust. Now, we will find this challenge there because there are lots of managers out there who are managers because they were the best engineer and they become the engineering manager, best salesperson become the, the sales manager. And actually, fundamentally, they may not be all that motivated by people. The problem is they're in the people management role. So there is something there where they should have a goal about um, managing their people effectively um, in terms of the, the role. So we start by building trust and knowing our people as individuals and being prepared to adapt our style to connect with them in the virtual environment. And then the rest of this is really classic people management performance. It is about clear expectations because we can't perform if we don't have clarity on expectations. We need to have regular review because you know, we're in a very volatile environment. Things can go out of uh, date really quickly and we need to have some consistency in terms of expectation from how the time that we're going to see with our manager, spend with our manager. Also, we need to be prepared to give direct feedback and development. So develop people, but be constructive and help them understand when they're not doing things wrong, rather than worrying about upsetting people. We get into the habit of catching people doing things right so that they trust us to give them feedback. Um, but also that means we have to be straight. Um, if things are not quite right, it's not personal. It's just about what needs to change because that will help them to be productive. 
accountability is massive for me that's the fallout of being tr of trust but we need to have coaching skills so we can hold people accountable so it may not be about saying I want you to have done this by Friday it would be when do you think you can get it done by or how are you going to um, achieve this or what do you think the output's going to look like and when will when can we re review it asking questions like that are much better for accountability um, because then we know that what the person is saying to us it's their idea rather than us applying it to them we're setting people up hopefully for success and if they come up with the idea and the goal themselves they're going to be more likely to complete it we need to find a room to recognize shout out give people positivity in a remote way because we're not getting any of that indirect feedback that um, nice warm slap on the back even the, even the just the little chats about your weekend and your pets um, we need to make time for some of those just to keep that human um, ice the lack of isolation trying to reduce that and then finally, if there are performance issues, to be honest, the last one, um, this point here, if we've been setting clear expectations and giving feedback and regularly reviewing, the chances of there being performance issues are quite low. But if there are, we need to be prepared to jump on them and deal with them um, because that's you, we can't afford to, to not manage these in any environment, let alone a virtual environment. So those are some of the um, thoughts there. And I say there's a, a, a ebook that we'll send out to you you can share with your colleagues um, it might be of use I'm interested which do you think your organization would benefit the most from um, doing more of I suppose in terms of this so share this as a poll so which remote management share skills do you think your organization could do to brush up on um, in those and if there's something that they could do to brush up on that I haven't um, got on here, just pop it in the chat. Outputs, absolutely, Clement. It really should be about outputs. And you can get your job done in less time and go to the gym, then good for you. I think, yeah, managers have always found it hard to set smart goals. That's largely because, this to UK, it's largely to because um, sometimes the really hard things are not as easy to measure um so yeah how do we measure how do we measure if someone is managing if put reports effectively so i think um i think there's something here so it there's something about having a clear conversation about what good looks like in a scenario so you have to go down to a level of clarity we'd, we'd almost have to work through that example specifically Stephen so what is the what is an acceptable level of um, report management what's the frequency is it about quality so there's something about how long it takes you manage something it's about the quality of the output in there do they understand what good looks like if they're making errors do they understand what those errors are how do they compare with somebody else who's managing a report effectively so um, you have to have dialogue with people, I think, to be able to work out what that is. Managing reports effectively is not a small, smart goal, and that would be very, very hard to measure somebody on because it's a value judgment. Effectively is a value judgment. Um, yes, Jackie, we'll send you the slides, don't worry. So what have we got here? I'll end the polling. We've got so anyone, any last polls? Please feel free to um, put your responses in now. I'm going to end and share. So, so really, it's still back to the essentials, right? So, but maybe I wonder whether this is something we need to do a specific session on, which is how do we measure the unmeasurable? Um, so these clear objectives and milestones, how can we have really great clarity, shared clarity that sets people up for success and we give people feedback against it? I think it is hard with lots of those, but we have to start somewhere and quite often you'll find that people don't have anything. So do we really know what we need to do from week to week, month to month and have those really clear goals? Then it's about recognition, um, virtual team building. So more of the sort of soft stuff. There's a performance piece then there's a team and people bit um, and then more just the strategic bits here and there is what you've gone for in terms of your observations. OK. So um, that's just a quick clip on our ebook. So we'll send that out to you as well. These are just some of my practical steps to finish on.
uh, there and um, I'll keep an eye on the tips. What I'll do is I'll come back to anything in the chat and I'll um, comment on those at the end because I appreciate that we're coming to the end of our time, tape, our time. Um, but these are things that can work. Maybe we can educate people to use remote performance management, reflect on levels of trust and empowerment, think about a cadence of communica uh, communication, and these are all practical steps that we can think about doing, plus a number of the ones that you've put in the chat. So just in terms of closing down, I've got a couple of final polls that I just wanted to gain your feedback on what sort of topics we should be doing um, next year, because we've been doing these for close to a year and um, I want to make sure that the content that we provide you with is useful and relevant. So first we'll have a think about what you want to do, if there's anything you you're going to take away from this that you might do and if you don't mind popping it in the chat that would be great if you've taken something away from this because other people might get inspiration from it so if you've got something you think you might go and try out as a result of um, taking part in this webinar pop it in the chat these are our next um, webinars we're just determining what's coming through in December that will be one in December and then we'll have we'll launch our um, next year's program we will launch up uh, I'll put up my final polls so that uh, people who can take part and disappear if they need to. So the final poll I'm just launching, it's um, asking you for a bit of feedback in terms of um, how useful you found this, uh, this, this content or this particular webinar, um, what other topics you might find of interest. Um, and I realised that I'd edited those and haven't saved my edits. So we've only got three on there and I had a load more on there. Um, so the other idea, so if you can put in the chat of other topics, I'm going to ask you to, um, to do. I'll let you complete those. You have to complete all three. So other topics that we thought about, we know there's stuff going on about engagement. Um, setting up mentoring was something that came up as a top topic and maybe it has to do with people doing virtual learning so I was thinking about doing something on that I'll probably do a podcast on it as well um, oh, we've had quite a high attendance on strategic HR strategic things so to do with balanced scorecards OD strategies talent management strategies is that something that people want to know more on if which case what topics um, or is it repeats remember by the way if anyone wants to go back on our old webinars we have a whole we'll put the link in the email that comes out to you but we've got a whole back catalogue of them so you can download any of those that you want to um, so Kate I'll, I'm hoping we've got you on the list if not I'll take a note of you for the mentoring thing because people want to do the mentoring virtual learning you want to do on Pell is it about how people learn or how we set up a learning culture because we've done that as well um, uh, then I was just thinking ma management practicalities. We can do more management practicalities. If you have got people who want um, management development, we have really gone all of this topic now. We've, we've got our open programs, which was oversubscribed for our pre-Christmas one. I don't think we'll be able to run another one pre-Christmas in terms of our virtual people management one, but we are going to put extra courses on in the new year and we are running some in-house um, ones. Uh, so if you want support with managing your to up, upskilling your managers in a virtual way then get in touch and we can share share examples share content um support if you want oh thanks kate yes you can uh, there's lots of content on the um podcast series and actually again for the people management one i've done one episode the next one comes out tomorrow which i think is our sixth um so i've done eight episodes aimed at line managers as well so if you're supporting other people you know you, that's free so the the ebook's free and um and line managers are free. Uh, I'll grab all of these. Yes, yeah, smart object is how to measure the unmeasurable. That is a good one, Sarah. I have to say, I'm not sure the answer that will challenge me that. So I think that's definitely worth doing. So thank you so much, guys. So link to the podcast. We'll put so everyone look out. You'll get an email from Caitlin, hopefully later this afternoon. We'll make sure that you've got um, the slides in there. We'll make sure you've got a link to our previous webinars in there, the ebook in there, and also a link to the HR Uprising podcast, particularly the virtual management series. I'd be really interested, Tori, to hear what you get out of that staff survey. So please feel free, you can disappear, anyone who wants to disappear, anyone's got any specific questions that you want me to um, respond to. Thank you, Kate, that's really kind feedback. Um, then I'm more than happy to either have a brief chat now or um, come on separately. And thanks for being so active because that makes all the difference, the chat um, and engaging with other people and the best practice that you guys are generously sharing with each other. Uh, it's nice to know we're not all in it on our own. So that's great.
Okay. Thank you, Harriet. Really nice that you could join us. Thanks, Stephen. It's really lovely to see names that I recognise. Um, and we've got some of our team on here as well, so hopefully they can recognise some, some people. Thanks, everybody. So I'm going to close it down because I think we're probably done. I've not got any specific um, questions that I haven't seen here. So I'll just grab those.